So before starting this video, I'd love to thank Relevel for sponsoring this entire video. A hiring platform with no degree required, no experience required. Mentoring sessions available, feels like a dream, isn't it? What if I say, all of this is for free? Well, Relevel by Unacademy is here to make your dream come true. With job opportunities in front-end, back-end and business development from India's top companies for freshers and people in the early career, Relevel is here to make the entire hiring process super simple and super quick. All you have to do is to give the Relevel test and based on your score, interviews will be scheduled and you will be hired. So what are you waiting for? Make sure you check out all the links in the description and apply for the Relevel test as soon as possible. If you are welcome back to the channel, I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So today we will be solving the problem, finding the post order travel, not using recursion, rather by using iteration. And in this video, I'm going to solve this using two stacks. In the next video, I'll solve this using a single stack. So what is a post order travel? It's nothing but left first, and then you'll go and write, and then you'll go to the uh, node or the root of the tree. Okay, this is for every tree. So assume this is the binary tree. And if I ask you to write the post order travel of this binary tree, what will be that? So can I say first I'll go to the left, so that's four. And then I'll go to the right, that's five. Then I will go to the root, that's two. So this tree is done. Now on this tree, the left is done, so I'll have to go to the right. So right I'll go. Now, if I'm on the right, I have to go to the uh, left, right? Then I have to go to the right. Then on this, I have to go to the right. So it's going to be 8, then a 7, then a 6, then a 3, then a 1. That is what the post order traversal for this given binary tree will be. So what we will do is we will initially take two stacks. This is the first stack, uh, stack 1 that I take. Then I'll take king, then I'll be taking stack 2. Okay, so let's take stack 2. Now what you will do initially is you'll take the root of the tree and you'll enter that into the stack 1. That's your initial configuration. Uh, that is what your initial configuration will be when you start off with. Now let's get started. So when you start the program, you take the first guy out. And the moment you take this out, you put that into your stack. Okay. After that, if this guy has a left that it has, you'll take that. If this guy has a right, you'll take that. So you've taken the left as well as right. Now at the next step, at the next iteration when you come across, stack dot top. The top element is three. So take this three, put this into your stack. Okay. And again, same thing. Stacks left, that is six. Stacks right, that is empty. So if it is empty, you don't need to put, but put the left. So I put it right. Now again, come back on the next iteration. Take whatever is at the top, put it onto your stack. Okay, so I put that into your other stack. Next, what do we have taken? If there is a left of six, take it. If there's a right of six, take it and put it into your stack. Perfect. Now what is in the next iteration? When you come across, you get seven. So you'll take seven. You'll put that into your stack two. Once I put that into your stack two, for seven, does there exist a left? No, does there exist a right? Yes. Take it and put that into your stack. In the next iteration, when you come across, take this eight, put that into your stack two. And again, does eight have a left? No. Does eight have a right? No. So you'll not do anything. In the next iteration, when you come back, you'll get a two. So take this two and put that into your stack two. Now what you'll do is you'll again look, does the two have a left? Yes. Does the two have a right? Yes. Put them in. Next, you'll again come back, stack dot top, take it and put it into your stack two. Does five have a left? No. Does five have a right? No. Next, again come back, you get a four. Does four have a left? No. Does four have a right? No. So this will be the four will be the last one. So once, once your stack one becomes empty, you can stop. And the moment you stop, take these uh, elements out from the stack in the uh, last and first stop fashion. So first four will be up, so you'll get four. Then five will be up, so you'll get five. Then two will be up, so you'll get two. Then eight will be up, so you'll get eight. Then seven will be up, so you'll get seven. Then six will be up, so you'll get six. Then three will be up, so you'll get three. Then one will be up, so you'll get one. So ultimately, you will get the entire post order traversal using a couple of stacks. So let's check out the code for this. So as usual, you know, the C++ code is on the left and the Java code is definitely on the right. So initially what I've done is I've taken the root and I've defined a post order list of vector. And if it is null, if the binary tree is null, I'll return an empty post order. Or else I'll declare a stack and I'll be entering the root initially into the stack. So what I've done is I've taken the topmost element and I've pushed it into the other stack. After that, if there exists a left, put it onto the stack one. If there exists a right, put it onto your stack one. Once your stack one becomes empty, just pop out every element from stack two and put it into your post order and return that post order. So what are the time complexity of the solution? Definitely be go often because you are ultimately traversing for every node. What about the space complexity? I can say that the space complexity is actually a two stacks, that is two n. Now you might say, but Shriver, you're also using a post order. Generally, uh, the, the, the data structure where we store the value and return, we do not consider that while computing, but you can still consider that if you want, and then it's two n plus n. So the main problem that we are facing is we're using a couple of stacks. Okay. So in the next video, I'll be telling you how can we solve this using a single stack. So I hope you've understood the entire explanation as well as the code, just in case you did. Please, please, please make sure you like this video because it took a lot of efforts to uh, make this entire tree series. Also, if you wish, you can definitely drop in a comment that will keep motivating me to make such further series. Also, if you're new to this channel, please do consider subscribing because I'm going to bring in such more series in the upcoming future as well. With this, uh, let's wrap up this video. Let's meet in the next lecture. Bye-bye. Take care.